Hi, this is Darren at Encryptomatic. Thanks for your interest in Message Lock, the email encryption add-in for Microsoft Outlook that makes it really easy to send and receive encrypted email messages. So uh, I'm today running on Windows XP and Microsoft Outlook 2003, although Message Lock also works with uh, Outlook 2007 and Windows Vista. The first thing you'll notice when you start up Outlook is that Message Lock has been installed on the main toolbar. And uh, clicking this button will bring you to the uh, configuration screen for message lock and there's a lot of options there you can change but for for most people using message lock is is just as simple as beginning to open a new email message so let me just show you how it works this is message lock uh, right out of the box so click on new message and that brings up the uh, the new message window and you'll notice now that there's uh, three options on the uh, on the toolbar the first option which is compress files will uh, only compress file attachments. Let me just add a uh, file attachment to this email. I'll add my famous maple syrup recipe. So uh, if I want to just compress the file attachment into a zip file, I just push the button that says compress files. There's no encryption applied. If I click the encrypt attachments button, then my maple syrup recipe will have uh, AES encryption applied to it and will be, can be sent securely. If I want to encrypt both the attachment and the message and let me just type a message here this is my secret message if I want to encrypt my recipe my secret recipe and my secret message I just click on uh, encrypt message I'm gonna go ahead and type in an email address here we'll actually send this message we'll send it to a test email address that we have here at the company and uh, that's really all that I, I have to do and then I I send a message and message lock goes to work. The first thing it'll do is it'll check its database to see if I have a password for this email address. This is the first time I've sent to this email address. So the first time it's going to ask me to enter a, a password. And I have a couple of options here. I can have message lock just generate uh, a password that I would later share with the recipient. Or if we've already agreed on a password, hopefully something more secure than test one, two, three, which is what I'm going to use here today. Um, if, if I want, uh, you know, I can just type that message in. So uh, again, it's a message that the, the sender and the receiver have, uh, have agreed on. Uh, a couple of other options that I have here, if I check do not encrypt, then it'll send this message uh, unencrypted. If I check z uh, change zip to PIZ, then it will uh, rename the zip file uh, to a PIZ file. So I would use that if uh, Oh, you know, if there's a case where uh, zip files are being, you know, not allowed through a firewall, uh, I can click that button, and very often that will uh, that will allow the message to get through. Um, I can also save the password to the database. Uh, if I uncheck it, the password will not be saved to the database. Encryption method. I have several different encryption methods. Most people are just going to use the uh, zip compatible AES 256. Now that would be WinZip compatible and compatible with a number of zip utilities that support uh, AES encryption. Uh, message type. I can select to send the message in MSG Outlook format. If the person has Outlook, I would use that. Um, if they don't have Outlook, I could send it in a format that could be viewed in a web browser like Internet Explorer or Firefox. I could select a PDF and then the message could be viewed in, P in a uh, portable document format, uh, Adobe PDF Reader. But today we'll just send it in a uh, MSG format. So let's go ahead and send that and message lock goes to work encrypting the message and uh, uh, sends it out. So uh, basically what it has sent, let me go to the sent items folder and take a look here. This is the what the, the message has been sent as. So there's a message lock attachment uh, has all of the uh, 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 has the, the message and the attachment in it and uh, then there's also a message here that that you can customize later if you'd like but this is the standard message that replaces the real message so the real message is now contained uh, securely inside of this uh, this uh, zip file attachment okay we're gonna change our orientation and what I'm going to do is download the file that we just sent so we are no longer the senders now we are the recipient and so this will give you a full demonstration as to how to send and receive using message lock. So uh, as now the, the file has just come down and message lock says, uh, gee, uh, I need a password and I don't know what it is. So what I would do is go ahead and just type the password, in, which in this case would be test123. 
and accept it. And then uh, message lock uh, decrypts the message and it is included here right here in my inbox. Here's my secret maple syrup recipe and here is my top secret message and uh, message lock to, to reassure me that the message was sent and received securely. It puts a timestamp in here that says it was decrypted by message lock at such and such a time on such and such a date. So uh, that is a round trip of a message uh, as it is sent and uh, received from one Outlook station to another. So now if I didn't have Outlook then I would use a uh, a different uh, you know like a like WinZip or a zip utility and the decryption would be would, would happen with those programs but uh, uh, you can also elect to send a self decrypting exe file and in fact if I wanted to do that let's just jump over to message lock preferences let's say that this recipient just could not receive a uh, a message in this format so what we can do now is we can say um, um, when we send to this person now let's let's send it as a self decrypting archive so they'll get an exe file that's wrapped in an unencrypted zip file and all they would uh, they would basically just run it on a Windows desktop and uh, or on a Windows computer and then the uh, file would self decrypt and they could save the attachments to uh, someplace on their disk and if they didn't have Outlook um, we could just send it in MHT format because chances are pretty good that they have Internet Explorer and then they would be able to view the message so uh, encryption settings, we can jump over to the encryption settings tab and there's a number of options that you can use to customize how message lock works. You can tell it to uh, attempt to decrypt inbound messages automatically, to encrypt uh, all outbound attachments that would turn the button on, uh, never store a password as a default. Um, you can set the default encryption method. Maybe you always want it to be um, self-decrypting so you could just set that. You also have the ability to import a list of passwords or to export passwords. I'm going to jump to the compression settings and uh, you can turn the compression button on uh, by clicking uh, this as a default so that the compression button would always be on. Uh, you can automatically unzip received zip files um, and you also have some options for naming zip files as well so uh, you can just you know, use a regular naming scheme or you can set it up by random string or date and time, uh, whatever, whatever suits your, your purposes. There's a number of advanced settings that you can enable with message lock, including uh, whether or not message lock should attempt to compress files that are already compressed. And we send it out with a list of files like uh, .rar, .zip, .tar. So uh, in this case, message lock would not um, uh, include these attachments or would not attempt to compress these attachments. With excluded domains, if there is a domain name that, you know, like Microsoft.com or whatever it happens to be that I never want to send compressed files to, um, go ahead and uh, you can enter the domain here. Uh, perhaps uh, you need to f specify on a per email address basis who should not receive compressed files. You can exclude files or, or email addresses from receiving compressed files. So basically message lock just won't do anything if the compressed button is selected and it's going to this email address. All right, you can also set up a password to protect your message lock preferences. Be careful with this because you can get yourself locked out and then if you get locked out you'll need to uh, delete the database and start over. So, uh, uh, But if this is what you want to do then you can enter passwords here and then uh, to get into message lock preferences you will need to enter this password. Uh, register basically just lets you um, uh, type in a key that uh, activates uh, the full version of message lock and gets it out of trial mode. And then we also have, um, if you click the help file, that'll give you a list of, uh, you know, all the features, a little more detail on how message lock works. Okay, I'm going to close out of this now. And uh, I want to just say thank you very much for your support and for watching this uh, uh, this video. We, we appreciate all of the uh, uh, suggestions that we get from users and uh, we, we try very hard to make message lock a very uh, user-friendly and uh, a practical way to send uh, encrypted email messages so uh, please uh, if, if you'd like to know more uh, contact us uh, send us an email or uh, visit our website at www.encryptomatic.com and we would love to uh, tell you more about message lock again thanks for your time have a great day